Allosaurus is one of the most famous dinosaurs in the world, being well represented in multiple Morris Information predator traps and drought assemblages. Despite this though, its taxonomy is a bit controversial, with two new species being described in just the last five years, Allosaurus gemadsoni in 2020, and a proper description of Allosaurus anax, which was formerly Saurophaganax, a different genus, late last year. Before that, in 2006, Allosaurus europius was described. This is in complement to the initial species Allosaurus fragilis, described in 1887. So over a hundred years of having great many specimens, but little detailed study on the differences in between them. This paper described new material from Portugal, which as that is Europe, you may have guessed that it is Allosaurus europius. And you'd be right, at least as far as what the material was initially thought to be when it was found. This new specimen allowed for a more systematic approach to Allosaurus phylogeny and relationships. And by that I mean when you're making a phylogeny, you code for a ton of different characters. For example, the shape of the lacrimal bones, or the presence of a projection on the nasal bone. Very specific traits. And when testing really big trees with a whole lot of different animals, you only really need to use one or two individuals of a single species. You're looking for really big differences, so that makes sense. You don't need to test every single individual of Allosaurus, you can instead use one Allosaurus, one Carcardonosaurus, one Pietnitskisaurus, and one of everything else and come up with a big tree like this, which is very generalized with the trends of different genera plotting into different groups, which is how you identify groups, things like Allosauroidea. But you can also go within the genus to a species level, and that's what this paper did. It used Allosaurus and a few close relatives as the outgroups to see where the relationships are. And all of the Portuguese specimens fall into Allosaurus fragilis. If they were a distinct species, Allosaurus europaeus, you'd expect them to group together and separately from all of the other species, such as Allosaurus gymnadzini and Allosaurus fragilis, which you can see do group separately. But all of the Portuguese specimens, they're in Allosaurus fragilis, meaning they are Allosaurus fragilis, and that Allosaurus europaeus isn't valid. This is based on a few different traits, like the maxilla having two rows of foramina for nutrients, the bottom of the jugal bone being convex behind and below the eye, the size of a depression on the basal bone, or the tall triangular lacrimal horn. This means that now there's three species, although this paper says that there's two because this was written before the paper that describes Sorphaganax as Allosaurus anax was published. Uh, that just happens sometimes. The science just lags a little bit behind because you're already writing something, you can't update everything to include every new publication. So yeah, we briefly had four species of Allosaurus, Fragilis, Gemadsoni, Annex, and Europius, but we're back down to three. These authors killed off the name Allosaurus Europius, and Allosaurus Fragilis inherited the earth seemingly, because it was both in Europe and North America at a time when these continents were breaking apart. And honestly, I'd not be shocked if the Iberian island at the time was closer to North America than previously thought, because there's a lot of faunal interchange happening between I, the Iberian island and North America. So maybe there is something more happening there, otherwise there's just some weird land bridge that we don't have good evidence for just yet. That kind of work though is going to be a paper for a huge team of researchers because you're going to need paleontologists and stratigraphers and people doing tectonics, and that's well outside of the purposes of this study just looking at Allosaurus europius and some new material, but just another question to be answered in the future. With that kind of future work thing, it's also important to realize some people are probably still going to defend Allosaurus europius, and it will probably be back in a future publication. There's going to be a lot of back and forth with this. Okay, so after recording we realized, oh right, we have a poster of Allosaurus, which is kind of relevant to this topic. So real quick, what I was talking about are a few of the different bones. So for example, you have the jugal bone here, which is a little bit more convex over in this region of it, where you know, I'm talking about behind the eye, this would be where the eye was. We also have the basio-occipital, which isn't really figured here because you need to look at the back of the skull. But basically, here's the occipital bone, and then you'd be on, the, on this flat surface that's coming down. There's just a depression there. And then finally, you have this lacrimal horn being a bit more triangular than what you see in the other species. So, very relevant. You can see kind of exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, there's also this part of the, the jugal bone that's really I, I, identifiable in Allosaurus fragilis versus Gymnadsoni. In Gymnadsoni, it's a lot more flat. Uh, whereas here, again, like you have this dip down in the back of the mouth. So, yeah, very relevant to have this poster here. And then I just totally forgot that, like, 
Oh right, I have this poster here. <laughs>